praise God. Hallelujah. We want to continue our series we've been on for the past three weeks. The right attitude producing the right results. Praise God. Hallelujah. And last week, we ended on the prophet Elisha coming to the Shunammite woman's house. Beloved, we are talking of attitude, which is a predominant, prevailing tendency of one spirit. Praise God. The right attitude. Hallelujah. It tells that the, the predominant, prevailing, that which we can see is in a good place. Praise God. And that is what we want to get to. That is why we want to come from bad attitude into good attitude. Many of us are at the place where we are because of our attitude. Praise God. We are just stuck in one place, not moving forward. We don't see any upward mobility. We don't see any advancement in our life. It's not because God doesn't want to elevate us. Or, but when God brings the opportunity, our attitude blow it out. Many a time they say that opportunity come wrapped in overall. And overall, men and women in overall, we don't take any notice of them. Because when you are in overall, we are, you are seen as a, a filthy person. We kind of look down on them. We look less of them. So many of us, our opportunity and our breakthrough, our miracles came wrapped in overall. Hallelujah. But because we saw death around it we, with a wrong attitude, what can be good out of this? Even Jesus, they said about him, what good can come out of Nazareth? That is the wrong mindset. It is the wrong attitude. Hallelujah. But it is from Nazareth that the deliverer, the savior of the world came from. Amen. But man said that what good can come out of that place? Beloved, it is our attitude. Sometimes men have looked at you and have disqualified you. But with the right attitude, God's elevation on your life cannot be squashed. If you believe it, shout amen. So with the Shunammite woman, she had the right attitude. When people are burying their dead, she refused to bury hers because she knew that if that she did not ask for, God has brought it to her. This, and the enemy has taken that, her joy away. God can restore her joy and make her joy full again in the mighty name of Jesus. So she did not curse God. She was not upset about God. He said, she believed that God has the power and the ability to bring back to life that which is dead. Amen. Are you with me today? I want us to pick from the Bible, hallelujah, in the book of 2 Kings chapter number 4. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, I'm so blessed. By the word of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. So the Bible says in the book of 2 Kings chapter number 4. Praise God. Reading from verse number 24. That is where we left off last week. Then she saddled the donkey and said to her servant. Drive the animal fast. Do not slow down the pace. Hallelujah. F for me unless I tell you. Someone say, do not slow down the pace. And the King James Version say, don't slacken the pace. Amen. Hallelujah. Stick with me. Stay with me. Don't slow me down. Hallelujah. Don't discourage me. Hallelujah. Don't, I know what is in my heart. I know what I'm believing God for. I know the miracle I expect this God to do for me. All you need, you don't need to believe with me. You don't need to have faith with me. But you just have to stick with me. You have to move with me. You have to carry on with me. Don't slacken the pace. Tell your labor, don't slow down the pace. Are you with me? But the woman said, told the servant, drive fast. Move fast with me. There is a vision that must come to pass. There is a miracle that we must attain. There is a breakthrough we must possess. But stay with me. Don't discourage me. 
Hallelujah. Don't discourage me. Stick with me. Move with me. Move at the same pace. Don't let me wait and stop for you. Amen. Praise God. So she said, don't slacken the pace. So in other words, move with me. Keep pace with me. Let us go. Hallelujah. So the Bible says, so she set out and came to the man of God at Mount Camel. When the man of God saw her at a distance, he said to Gehazi, his servant, Look, there is the Shunammite woman. Please run now to meet her and ask her if it is well with you. It is well with your husband. Is it well with your child? And she answered, It is well. And last week we just ended on that. It is well. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, it is well. Hallelujah. It is well with my life. Hallelujah. It is well with my family. It is well with my marriage. It is well with my career. It is well with my education. It is well with my health. It is well with three pastors. He said, it is well. One, the, the, the prophet asked three questions. Is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Or is it well with your child? Why? Because these were the areas of concern to this woman. Hallelujah. Every woman has to think how the husband will be taken care of or how well the husband is. Are their children's needs met? How their children are to be taken care of and how their needs will be met. So it is a concern for every woman. And the man of God knew that. Why? Because he had lived under their roof. Because this woman perceived that this is a man of God. Not just a man of God, but a holy man of God. And for that matter, the spirit of God was upon him. God had called him for what he was doing. Praise God. So he is not just a man who will come and preach because of what they will get, but the, the anointing and the call of God on him. I believe this woman, the Shunammite woman, have dealt with several men of God. That is why she can distinguish that this is a holy man because her encounter with him was different from maybe the other men of God she had had an encounter with. So, this man had lived under their roof. This man of God might have seen that this woman is concerned. One, for her husband needs to be met. So, if she's coming to me, not in the new moon, nor in the Sabbath, there must be an issue. There might be something that is troubling her that I must know, that I must attend to. So, is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? And is it well with your child? But with her right attitude, with her positive attitude, with that spirit in her that all is well, she never confirmed the, the current status. She never confirmed the current situation. The son who was dead in the bed of Elijah, she never confessed it, but she declared Read and declared and said that it is well, hallelujah. Unto them that believeth God, there shall be a performance, hallelujah. In Job, he said that you shall decree a thing and it shall come to pass. It shall come to glorious manifestation. It shall be established. This woman did not use her mouth to confess the negative for it to be established. Like I said in church many times, many of us, we are the product of our ways. Whether a spoken word or unspoken word. Many of us, we are where we are now, we are here because somebody spoke into our lives, or we spoke into our lives, or we did not speak into our lives. Because I said, You shall decree a thing, and it shall be established. So this woman knew that if she decreed a negative, Cause she will receive a negative result. So she had learned not to confess her present circumstances. That is, does not mean we are in self denial. The Bible says, Let the weak say, I am strong. So the Bible teaches us how to use our tongue to speak, to bring to manifestation. Because our present circumstances or situation are always subject to change. You never stayed in reception till now. 
It was for a season. You graduated from there, you went to uh, primary school, you graduated from there, you went to secondary school, you graduated from there. You never stayed in uni forever. Are you with me? It does not mean that we are in self-denial. Your friends and people around you say, I mean, you are not being realistic. But being realistic about your poverty, what good will it do to you? What good will it do to you? By worrying about your worries, what good does it do to you? So the Bible says, let the poor say I am rich. At least that gives you encouragement. It gives you the hope that your situation can change. And as you decree it, God and his angels help you for it to come to manifestation. I said two weeks ago, many of us, you have to pray for crop failure. The words that has been spoken over our lives that were not beneficial to us, we have to pray against it that they will not manifest. Are you with me? So the Bible says that this woman did not speak in the negative, even though the situation at home was grievous and there was death staring in her face. She continued speaking it is well. I pray today that it is well with you in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that your home is well. And the Bible says, so she came to the mountain to the man of God. She took hold of his feet. Like Jacob, I will not let you go until you bless me. Why? Because he could not live a life of runaway. He could not continue to live a life of a deceiver and a liar. It is not pleasant. So he held on to you and said, I will not let you go until you change my destiny, until you change my situation, until you change my condition. I decree unto you every situation you find yourself in is subject to change. Jacob never continued to be a deceiver and a supplanter and a liar. His name was changed unto Israel. Hallelujah. In other words, that which followed after him as a liar and a deceiver, wherever he went, he was deceiving people for a living. Change. Why? Because every position we are is subject to change. So the Bible says that she took hold of his feet. Gehazi approached to push her away. It, that is what people of God do. The armor bearers, they are the people that stop people from receiving their breakthrough. The disciples, their little children were coming to Jesus for the word of God to be written on their heart and you have these disciples, the mature ones, the ones that they are, they are made up their mind already. No, 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 you can't. Jesus said, no, 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 let them come to me. For theirs belong the kingdom. Amen. So Gehazi, the, the armor bearer of the prophet, pushing her away. But this woman is troubled. She has a need that the servant cannot help him. But she needed the man of God to attend to her situation and her condition. So when the woman grabbed his feet, the servant, Gehazi, who everything is working well for him, pushing her away. May nobody push you away from your position in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree in the realm of the spirit, whosoever is pushing you from your breakthrough, whosoever is pushing you from your miracle, any forces pushing you against from your destiny, may the Lord, may the Lord himself undergird you in the mighty name of Jesus and bring you into the place that he has ordained for you in the mighty name of Yeshua. If you believe it, shout amen. So the Bible says, but the man of God said, let her alone. May the Lord fight for you. May the Lord defend you. May the Lord go ahead of you. May the Lord show interest in your case. In the mighty name of Jesus, may you have audience with the Lord. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. When men has rejected you, may God receive you in the mighty name of Jesus. When men has disappointed you, may the Lord give you a new appointment in the name of Jesus. The servant pushed her away, but the man himself said, let her alone. May you be left alone in the mighty name of Jesus at the feet of the Lord. Oh, in his presence, may you have the peace of his presence. May you have the joy of his presence. May you have the health of his presence. May you have the abundance of his presence. Let her alone, for her soul is desperate and trouble within her. And the Lord has hidden the reason from me and has not told me. Then she said, did I ask for a son from my Lord? Did I not say, do not give me false hope? Then he said to Gehazi, get up my loins, hallelujah. Prepare now and take my staff in your hand and go to the woman's house. If you meet any man along the way, do not greet him. And if a man greets you, do not stop to answer him. And lay my staff on the face of the boy. As soon as you reach the house, the mother of the child said, As the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So Elisha arose and followed her. Verse number 31. Gehazi went on ahead of them and laid the staff on the boy's face. But there was no sound or response from the boy. So he turned back to meet Elijah and told him, the boy has not awakened or revived. Then Elisha came into the house. The boy was dead and lying on his bed. Praise God. That is a whole message in itself. Praise God. That is a whole message. Your provision will make room for you. The boy was not in the couch. The boy was laid in the bed the woman provided for the man of God. So that which she provided for him, unknown for her, became an answer prayer she needed. Praise God. But like I said, it's a whole message. I can just pull out a message from there for three weeks. Just on that verse, your provision will make room for you. Can you imagine if this woman had not had the foresight and perceived this as a holy man of God and built him the upper room and made the bed for him and a table for him, and when the child died, where will she keep the child? Let's be outstanding. The prophet said that this is a woman desperate. Beloved, when you need a thing, you cannot allow anybody to stop you. When Gehazi pushed her away, she could have just gone. But she was steadfast. And the man of God perceived and knew that this is nothing but troubled, desperate woman. She needs a listening. Today, may the Lord hear you. May the Lord hear you. Whether it is your essence, may the Lord hear you. Whether it is your marriage, may the Lord hear you. Whether it is your education, may the Lord hear you. Whether it is your ministry, may the Lord give you audience. In the mighty name of Jesus, I decree in the mighty name of Jesus, nobody will push you away from your destiny. Nobody will push you away from your purpose. Nobody will push you away from your calling. In the mighty name of Jesus, may the Lord give you audience. In the mighty name of Yeshua. In the mighty name of Yeshua. I want you to talk to the Lord. Talk to him. 
What is causing you desperation? What is causing you sorrow and bitter of heart? What is troubling you about life? What is causing you sleepless nights? That you can't sleep at night. The word of God says he gives his, his beloved sleep. But you can't sleep. You are the beloved. But issues are troubling you that you can't sleep. Ulu laid at his feet. The woman came and grabbed the feet of the man of God. And even when the man of God has given instructions and orders that the, 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 the servant go and place his staff on the bed, on the boy, the woman said, I will not leave you alone until the man went with him. Beloved, that is desperation. May the Lord hear you in your hour of desperation. May the Lord hear you when you call. May the Lord hear you when you call. In the mighty name of Jesus. Talk to him. He will not cast you out. He will not push you away. He will not drive you out. He will not chastise you or judge you. Beloved, whatever it is. He will grab hold on you. And he will help you. He will come through for you. He will deliver you. And he will give you peace in the mighty name of Jesus. Talk to him, talk to him, talk to him. Like the Shunammite woman, she did not keep her emotions. She did not keep it within herself. She did not sorrow about it. But she ran because she knew where her help comes from. She said, did I not ask you not to give me false hope? She did not accept no for an answer. She was resolute in her attitude. That my right attitude will deliver for me the right results that I desire. I need my son alive. I need my son back alive. I'm not burying my son. Beloved, every dream that you have buried is coming back to life. Man nebros kapa kepa yakata. I want you to begin to pray right now. For the next 30 seconds, 60 seconds, I want you to pray. Visions that has been buried. Oh, my Yakata, maybe you, you ran that vision with somebody close to you and they broke that vision and you packed it. It's coming back to life. That vision, that dream will not be buried. But it shall come to glorious manifestation. In the mighty name of Jesus. Habakkuk say, even if it tarries, wait for it. For it shall surely come to pass. Father, we thank you. For resurrection of dreams and vision. Life and energy and power. Coming to their people. In the mighty name of Jesus. And let the church say, Amen. If you receive something for today, why don't you put your hands together and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. And now unto the possessor of the heaven and the earth. The one who sits enthroned in heaven and the earth is his footstool. The one who has glorified your life. He said in his word, what is the son of man that you are mindful of him? That you crown him with glory. May the glory of God upon your life come to glorious manifestation. In the mighty name of Jesus, I decree upon your life that your gold will not be dim in the mighty name of Jesus, but your gold will shine brighter and brighter in the mighty name of Yeshua. The Lord bless you and prosper you. May you go out this week in the kindness of the Lord. May you go out this week in the love of the Lord. May you go out this week in the favor of the Lord. And may you encounter grace every day of your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord bless you and keep you till we meet again in Jesus' mighty name.